fully factor p of x, which is x cubed minus x squared minus 14x plus 24. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit of a longer solution, um, so I've kind of written out our approach here. We're going to be using the four-step process to apply the factor theorem, uh, and in step one of that process, where we find a root, we're going to employ the rational zeros theorem to uh, help us decide what values to test. So remember, the rational zeros theorem tells us that the roots of a polynomial must be factors of the constant term. So in this case, the constant term is 24. Uh, the factors are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and so on. How about we just start with uh, these three plus or minus factors? Okay, so let's start by testing 1 and see if 1 is a root of this polynomial. So to do that, we would evaluate p of 1. Uh, remember, this is step one of our four-step process to apply the factor theorem. We need to find a root and a corresponding factor that is x minus that root. Okay, so p of 1, uh, right away I can tell you, is not 0. Since we'll have 1 minus 1 minus 14 plus 24, 1 minus 1 is 0, then we have negative 14 plus 24, so that's not going to be equal to 0. Very similar analysis for negative 1. I'll let you do that on your own if you care to. If not, take my word for it. And so next we'll test 2. So let's see if p of 2 is equal to 0. We'll have 2 cubed minus 2 squared minus 14 times 2 plus 24. So 2 cubed is 8, 2 squared is 4, negative 14 times 2 is negative 28, and then we have plus 24. So 8 minus 4 is equal to positive 4. Negative 28 plus 24 is negative 4. And these two will actually cancel to give us 0. So this actually is equal to 0, which means that 2 is a root. And therefore, x minus 2 is a factor. OK, so that's step 1 done. Now on to step 2, we're going to divide our polynomial p of x by the factor we've just found, x minus 2. OK, so I'm going to do that synthetically, just to save time and a little bit of space. So first step is going to be to bring down the coefficients. We have 1, minus 1, minus 14, and 24. So we'll have 1, minus 1, minus 14, 24. Then the number that goes outside of the synthetic division sign is going to be 2, since our divisor is in that x minus a form, and our a value is 2. Keep in mind that that's not negative 2. That's a mistake that students often make. Since we're already in the x minus a form, the a value is 2. Now our first step is to bring down this 1. So we'll have 1 here. Then we multiply 2 times 1 to give us 2. And then we add negative 1 plus 2, not subtract. So remember, in synthetic division, we add these numbers uh, to give us positive 1. 2 times 1 gives us another 2. Negative 14 plus 2 gives us negative 12. And then 2 times negative 12 gives us negative 24. 24 plus negative 24 is 0. So our remainder is 0. Our constant term of the quotient is negative 12. The x coefficient is 1. And the x squared coefficient is also 1. So our quotient is x squared plus x minus 12. This is our quotient q of x. OK, so step three is to repeat this process until our quotient is quadratic. In this case, our quotient already is quadratic. So I'm just going to write it again. And now step four is to factor the quadratic. So we can factor this quadratic using the fast factoring method since the leading coefficient is 1. So 1 times negative 12 gives us negative 12. Uh, so we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add to 1, which is the coefficient on the x term. So those two numbers are, let's see, 4 and minus 3. So 4 minus 3 gives us the 1 on the x term, and 4 times negative 3 gives us the negative 12 constant term. OK, so uh, we can factor this quadratic down to x plus 4 times x minus 3. OK, so now our original polynomial, p of x, in step 2, we got it down to our quotient, q of x, times the divisor, d of x, or explicitly, 
we can say that we got it down to x squared plus x minus 12 times the divisor x minus 2. And then we found that this expression, the quotient expression, factored down to x plus 4 times x minus 3. So our fully factored p of x looks like this. We have x plus 4 times x minus 3 times x minus 2. That's the answer to this problem.